the lonely place came out of the cold, lonely road just below the rise, led to the house. First word was a meanless curse. Hadn't spoken anything else since leaving the bus at Butler's Vale. Wind whistled past him, suddenly he stopped, and on a sob, the fear, the terror, frozen his blood, his soul long ago, his heart turned, ready to abandon everything, ready to run down the half mile, go to the audio transfer back to bus, bus at Le- Butlersville, but a real tiny hamlet, though it was, of lights and voices out here, near the old family homestead, was only a patch of wood broken road, vast shadowy trees, an ocean of darkness beyond. Beyond he knew were just fields. But he couldn't see them. He might they might hold anything, any terror, any menace. He saw the house and stored of fear. Feel she feel it. Pierced his heart, his teeth clattered. A light was burning in a window on the second floor light, a house empty for twenty years. He vanished and he breathed a sigh of relief. He glanced at the black vault of the skies. Pitchy oak curtain had parted for just an instant. The moonlight breaking through had linted off one of the window panes. It was just that, of course. Or was it? His heart panted violently. Again he cursed. Why had Jesus sitting live here after they were to be married in April? She knew he didn't like the place. He knew, he knew she did. She liked old ends and salt box houses. She had a passion for the old things that old. American things, spindly, spider-like, maple furniture. Yes, the place is charming enough. A day he remembered it was a boy. A brook sparkled down the edge of the pasture. But at night, from his earliest child, he had hated the place of night. He did everything, all lonely places at night. As a boy, he lay... He had laid awake at night and listened to night voices. They were always there when we went in. Old house, those creaks on the stairs. Dark rustle in the attic of his bedroom. The very room in which lights had seemed to shine. Sometimes he used to scream and his mother would come and tell him it was just his bad nature. Waking up his rise towards the house. Walking up to the rise of the house, he fell off harshly. Perhaps it had been his imagination after all. He said lay on the floor. He seemed to move and waver like dark fires, rich lamp. There, there, well, that was long, long ago. Now the house was his. By the bee wanted to live there. The old driveway up from the butt boards, a course to him led him to the weedy flower bed before the house. Stavely felt in his pocket for the key. He, if he lost it or forgotten it, he could go back come some other night when the moon Lease would be shining and cold wind, a warmer whisper, for that he had become, spending one night alone in the house. He knew well it was the only way to break the spell, a terror laid on him for twenty-five of his years. Above all else, he didn't want to play the coward before Jean. He mustn't lose her. He... knew... If she suspected for an instant, is afraid of lonely places or shadows of noises at night, you might think it much less of him as a man. A praying strength his heart, as his fingers closed over the key in his pocket, his eyes very weakened, and again he paused. Black bulk of the house was like, like some evil mould. Things much hideous as things might lurk when he shook himself. He was, after all, a man, not a boy though he might have a boy's feelings. Throwing his shoulders back, he walked up the old steps to the door, fitted a key to the lock. The door gave way. A rusty rattle of what? A rat that started him by its leap from an old table, scurried off down the far corridor, led to the kitchen, came inside, weak, sweating, trembling, and stood there alone. The table stood an old carousel lamp. He picked it up, shook it, it was dry, and a gra- wick broke off. Fell stodily against the glass wall of the far old chamber. Then he remembered the flashlight in his pocket. He swept it out, got at the clean beam, slashed like a sword around the room. As all the family had left it when they had moved to the city, as his mother told him to had been. So it was old rickety. He shrugged Mary with a door. Jean with a door, fixing it. A bro- bitter look 
Rosie's face. Yes, the place would be too much for her to resist. If no escape, no matter how he argued, he feared they could at least save or rent. rent. Behind him, the sprawled creaked and spun. There was nothing there save darkness and dust. And a rustle now from upstairs, a rustle, the familiar memory, and which have been only, could, would, could be only made by something heavier than a rat. He his teeth. This was the test. We were to be a man and all. Had to climb those stairs to his room. Found the empty suspected of its exercise terror and fright once and for all. Clenching his chittering, chattering teeth, he went up the stairs. As the head of the stairs, he heard the voices of his old room. A shock of gladness poured through him. They wasn't fear. These weren't the fears he imagined the boy. Voices were real. By his door were crouching. Probably one or two prellers had broken the house of steel. Anger swept through him. He could handle men. He could teach the tramps a lesson. His free fist balled. He came up against the door and sent it crashing back. Then as the light beam shot through to the room beyond, screaming and trying to run, he couldn't. He'd always known that it would come to this. He couldn't. He stood there numb. Logical, he thought. The force of the child's mind was weak. Though his imagination might be great. It could people the dark with only weak. Small terrors, but a force of man's mind. Common imagination, grown twenty-five years older, stronger, give body and weight to their vagaries. These had plenty of both. The fears stood outlined and terribly trembling being. They were just as he had always imagined them to be. One was tall, one was short, one was in between. As they came towards him, they looked as fears always did, with hatred in their eyes and murder in their claws. Reached for him mouthy words of blood and terror and death, the sounds he was taken for those of men.